the engines were excited. There were to be some special rail tours to the seaside, and no one knew which engine would be chosen to pull them. It ought to be me, observed Mallard. After all, that seaside place helped to pay for my repairs. The others thought someone else should have a chance. Thomas knew he would not be chosen, but he enjoyed listening to the others arguing. He was pleased in the end when it was decided to give the trips to Green Arrow. When Green Arrow returned from the first tour, he said he had never seen so many people. Soon there was talk of putting on extra trains, but this was not possible. All we can do is add extra coaches, they said. But then Green Arrow can't pull a train that heavy on his own. Of course I can, he scoffed. My brothers and I did during the war. Can I help? asked Thomas. The man in charge stared. I don't see why not, he said. In the morning, Thomas's fireman arrived early. Thomas's fire was lit, and while the warmth crept through his boiler, the fireman made sure all his moving parts were well oiled. Behind, Green Arrow was being prepared too, and when they were both ready, they set off to find their coaches. The station platform was jammed with an admiring crowd, who didn't seem to get any smaller, even after a trainload of people were in their seats. Thomas was huddled in front. He was pleased. He liked to see where he was going. At the seaside station, Thomas was turned round so that he could go in front again. After a rest, the engine set off once more. The ruined abbey stood at a place where the line curved beside a river. The crowd had gathered to wave and cheer, but Thomas wasn't watching them. Looking ahead, he had seen something strange. Stop, stop! He whistled in alarm. The train was heavy and hard to stop, but they managed it just in time. Now everyone was able to see that, in front of Thomas, the rail near the river was lower than the one on the other side. The water has undermined the embankment, said the inspector. I'll go to the signal box and sort things out. Buses came for the passengers, but it was late before the men decided it would be safe to use the other track. Together, the engines pushed the coaches back to a crossover. On his own, Thomas slowly crept past the landslip. Then, very carefully, Green Arrow pulled the empty coaches by, and together they brought the train back to York. A few days later, a party of important-looking people came into the museum. One was the man in charge, and behind him was the Fat Controller. Oh dear, thought Thomas, they've come to take me away for frightening that child. But the Fat Controller was smiling. The man in charge held up his hand for silence. Thomas, said the man in charge, your controller told us you are a really useful engine. He is right. For saving a nasty accident the other day, we have decided that you should become an honorary member of the National Railway Collection. This special plate will remind you of your visit to us. Ladies and gentlemen, three cheers for Thomas the Tank Engine! Hip hip! Hooray! Hip hip! Hooray! Hip hip! Hooray! The noise nearly raised the roof. Well done, Thomas, smiled the fat controller. I knew you would be a credit to our railway. <laughs>